When I enter my house, I open the garage, I enter the house, I get out of my car, I walk to the door, and when I want the light to be on, I flip the fucking light switch that's right next to my garage. Why in hell, what, why the fuck would I give you $15 a month to be able to turn the light on in my house remotely when I could just turn the light on when I get home by doing this? Are you insane? Who the fuck would pay extra money for this? Who voted in this survey? Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I wanted to read you the results of some interesting surveys that were done about consumer interest in subscription required connected services for your car. On this channel, I tend to not be a fan of subscription services. There are some very rare times where I could at least be somewhat forgiving, like in the Waves case where we're talking about three to $7,000 plug-in bundles being made available for $15 a month where I can at least kind of look at it and go, okay, fine. Maybe that's not the worst thing in the world, even if I prefer to still have the option to be able to buy something. But for the most part, I'm not a fan of the you will own nothing and be happy world. I like being able to own things. If I have seat heaters that I purchased in my car, if I give BMW 72,000 effing dollars and my car came with a seat heater, you bet your ass I am ripping that shit open to put my own switch in there if you think you can charge me monthly for what I already paid for. So this is an interesting little survey. One thing to keep in mind is that several of these things actually cost more money per month. So this is $10 extra a month, $2 monthly. This is a $400 feature. But all of these different features that I'm reading are on top of a $15 monthly in-vehicle charge. So you're going to give Chevy or Ford or Toyota or Tesla $15 a month. And then on top of it, you may have to pay extra for this stuff. So internet connection enables connected features and includes Wi-Fi hotspot. 30% said fine. You know, okay, fine. They will pay that, you know, they'll pay for that. And okay, I, I kind of get it. You know, maybe you don't know that your phone has a mobile hotspot feature. Again, my phone allows me to just do this. I can turn on mobile hotspot right over here. I'm limited to like 10 or 15 gigabytes on AT&T before it gets throttled to crap. But that's still 10 to 15 gigabytes a month. That's usually good enough if I'm just in my car. And most people already have a phone on them that they're paying for a data plan on. Meaning again, why would I pay for my car to have the hotspot when I have a hotspot on my phone, which I have used when I've been parked and needed to do some work on my laptop? 30% said that they pay for internet connection in their car, though. 23% said that they would pay to remotely control certain features in their car or functions from their phone. So that's $10 a month. Now, that $10 a month is on top of the $15 a month you're paying for your car already. So again, you're paying $15 a month to have your car online. And on top of that $15 a month, once your car is online, uh, 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 if you want to be able to control the air conditioner from your car using the software that you already bought when you bought the fucking car, you're now going to have to pay them an additional $10 per month to do so. So if you want to be able to say, okay, set, turn on the air conditioner so that before you come down the elevator of your building and walk over to your car, which is sitting in a parking lot in Texas, 109 degree summer heat, you have the AC on. That's understandable. This is something that people were able to do via remote start. But again, the range on remote start only goes so far. Remote start, which is, again, free, really like, like the remote start and the key fob is free. That is something that, you know, you're not going to adjust the temperature of your AC or the fan or anything like that. If you want to be able to do that from your phone, well, pay us again. Again, you paid $15 a month for your car to be connected. Now you got to pay $10 a month extra for that. And there was about, let's see, according to this, 23% were interested in that. And of that, I can kind of understand. Again, people want to be able to do things like, you know, open or close the door from really far away. Or, you know, I I'm, I'm 100 miles away. Can you open, can you start the car? Something like that. Or for the most part, I think people are using this to be able to turn on heated seats, heated steering wheel, and the heat and stuff like that, even if they're for far enough from their car that the key fob doesn't work, but they're close enough that by the time they get to it, they will still be cold getting into the car if the heat's not on kind of thing. So I can kind of understand it, even if I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. Stream video content directly to the center of the infotainment screen. I'm not paying you $15 a month to stream to my freaking car. I have a phone. If I want to watch stuff on my car, I can do is I can buy a $10 phone mount, put it like this, turn the phone into landscape mode while I'm parked, and watch stuff on my phone. Further, in spite of the fact that I'm giving you more money every month to be able to watch it in my car, I can guarantee you it's going to be filled with ads and other BS. You know that if you give Chevy or Ford or Tesla money to be able to watch stuff in your car, they're going to find some way to put ads in there. On my phone, using Graphene OS, I have the ability to use applications like Newpipe that allow me to view YouTube videos without seeing any ads. They allow me to use Adblock in my browser and on other streaming services. There are many ways that I can view things on my phone where it's not only more convenient than in my car, but also I don't have to deal with ads the same way that I probably will in my car. How much do you want to bet that the YouTube viewer in my car is going to allow all the ads through versus something like Newpipe that I can install on my phone 
or YouTube Vanced that allows me to not see it. And how much do you want to bet that whatever operating system is running on my car, I can guarantee you they're not going to let me install New Pipe or YouTube Vanced or Adblock on there to be able to block ads and stuff like that. Above all, I'm already paying to be able to do it on my phone. I'm already paying to be able to watch this stuff on my phone. Why do I want to use my car's interface? Why do I want to reproduce this in my car when I already have it on my phone, which probably has a better interface than the garbage in my car? Next up, hazard notification with rerouting, $2 monthly. So you have to pay $15 a month to have your car online, and then an additional $2 a month if you want the map to reroute you when there's an issue. Or you can use Google Maps for free. Or you can use organic maps. Hell, you can have a separate profile on your phone where you're not logged in using a normal account uh, if you're using Graphene OS so that Google Maps doesn't even know who you are, but you get all the routing benefits of Google Maps for free. If you can use Google Maps on your phone for free with hazard routing, or you can use organic maps on your phone if you don't want to deal with Google, why would I pay you an additional $2 to have this type of rerouting? Why, again, honestly, why would I even use my car? You know how many people I see that have an infotainment system built into their car that has a port for maps that still have their phone hanging up because their phone at the end of the day just fundamentally is a better interface? It's just not only is it a better interface, but usually putting your phone over here and having it like this on the stand is much easier than an infotainment screen that's off to the side over there that's pointing this way. I get have my phone point. Like, no, I mean, thank, thankfully, only 18% are interested in that. Browse the internet directly on the center infotainment screen. And again, why would I want to do that? I can use Brave Browser over here on my laptop or my desktop. I can use that on my phone. There are so many ways that you can use brow uh, different types of ways to block ads on your phone so that you are not seeing ads when you're visiting websites. I would use my phone. If I want to browse the web, if somebody sends me a link via Signal or Telegram or Discord or WhatsApp or Matrix or email or anything else, I'm not going to figure out a way to send that link to my car so that I can then use the internet connection of my car that I have to pay extra money for to use this crappy infotainment screen to browse it when I could just use my phone, which again, 99% of the time is going to be better than whatever's in your car. See, the thing is with a car, when you buy a car, you're typically buying a car. You're not buying the infotainment system. The deciding factor in purchasing a car is going to be things like gas mileage, speed, comfort, you know, how it rates in a crash, uh, durability, repairability, comfort. It's not going to be the infotainment screen. I've never heard somebody say, man, I could get this used car for $6,000. It has amazing gas mileage. It's really durable. It's very comfortable inside. It handles like a dream, but the infotainment screen just doesn't look the way I like, so I can't buy it. That's not the way people buy cars. People, when it comes to purchasing a smartphone, that really matters to them. How snappy the screen in the smartphone is. Uh, you know, what apps can I install on it? How intuitive is it? How's the user interface? That's very important because that's literally all you're buying. When you're buying a smartphone, that's, like, that, that's all you care about. When you're buying a phone, that, that's its primary function. They need that to be perfect because that's its primary function. You don't have all these other things that you're going to be rating it on. So your phone has to be perfect there. Whereas a car can have an absolute garbage infotainment system and still sell because there's so many other things that matter. So because of that, my phone, 99% of the time, is going to be light years ahead of whatever garbage is in the car. And that's when the car is new, much less when the car is five or six years old and this shit's all old and crusty compared to what you can get on a modern smartphone. It gets better, though. Remotely control your home. Utilize your voice to remotely control, unlock, turn off lights, etc. from your vehicle. 17% said they show interest in that. And again, even 17% is surprising to me. It's very low, but it's 17% more than what it should be, which in my opinion is zero. There's no way in hell I'm paying you a monthly fucking fee to be able to turn on or off lights in my home. When I enter my house, I open the garage, I enter the house, I get out of my car, I walk to the door, and when I want the light to be on, I flip the fucking light switch that's right next to my garage. Why in hell, what, why the fuck would I give you $15 a month to be able to turn the light on in my house remotely when I could just turn the light on when I get home by doing this? Are you insane? Who the fuck would pay extra money for this? Who voted in this survey? Okay, play video games directly on the center infotainment screen. 14% said they would pay extra money to be able to play games in their car. I bought Street Fighter Alpha 3 when I was like 13 years old. That shit cost me $40. If I want to take that $40 game that I paid for like damn near 20 years ago, I can still play that game today without paying a monthly fee. Why would I pay you a monthly fee to play a goddamn video game? Are you insane? I can buy a game on my phone for $4. And if I want to play that game, I can play it on my phone without paying you a monthly fee to play it in the fucking car. How many people that are watching this video have a phone? 
Even if you have a $50 smartphone, a $50 phone is 99% of the time still going to be more capable of playing a game than your car because many people tend to buy cars that are a few years old to save money. So a 2020 phone that costs $50 is probably going to be better at playing a game than a 2016 car that costs $40,000. It's probably going to have a better processor on it. Why would you pay extra for that? Sharing of driving behavior with insurance company to lower premiums. Okay, so you're going to pay $15 a month for your car to connect to the internet so that you can lower your insurance. So, and by the way, have you ever seen the, what you get when you put that beacon in your car? They lower your insurance by like 3 to $8. It's a joke. It's negligible. Not only is your insurance company spying on your driving, but you're paying more money for it all so that you could just lower your premium. So pay $15 a month to save eight. Like, now, 13% said yes to that. And again, while that number is low, I'm pretty sure that the number is low, 13%. That's still 13% more than it should be, in my opinion. Partake in video conferencing using the center infotainment screen. 13% said yes to this. Your phone already does this. You don't need to do, you use your center screen for video conferencing. This is insane. A, again, if I put my phone on a $10 stand, I can move it to the side so it's actually facing me. Whereas the screen in the center infotainment is going to be pointed this way instead of this way. B, my phone is free and already does this. If I get a link to a Jitsi meeting or a Zoom meeting or whatever on Discord or Signal or Slack or WhatsApp or whatever, I can just click that on my phone. I don't want to have to figure out some way to get the meeting URL over to my car. I don't want to figure out how to do that or how to sync that. If I get a message on my phone, which is how I'm going to get the message that I need a meet to do a meeting, whether email or something else, I'm going to click that message on my phone, and then I'm going to open it on my phone. That's the way this works. 99% of the population, even if their car was capable of dealing with email, nobody's going to do this. Like, nobody. Nobody is going to decide, I'm going to type my email username, password, and server, and my signal info, and my Telegram, and WhatsApp, and Discord, and Slack, all into my car computer, so that when I receive a message with an invitation to a video conference, I'm going to click that message on my car interface. Like, it's like nobody's doing this. They're doing this on their phone. Now, there are things like Android Auto where you can take whatever's going on in your phone and have it in your car. But again, that's separate from this. I don't, if, if, even if I'm using that, I'm still going to use my phone camera and everything. Like, I'm just... Ah. Remote notification on live streaming of vehicle events. This is $400. So not only do you have to pay $15 a month for the remote vehicle service, but in order to view the cameras that you paid for when you bought the car. After paying them $15 a month for the internet to give you access to those cameras, you have to give them $400 for their blessing. 11% said yes to that. I can understand that. At the very least, I can understand somebody saying, I want to know what's going on in the parking lot from my hotel room because there's some shady people outside and I hear them messing with somebody's car. Are they stealing my catalytic converter? Let me see. I can get somebody wanting to pay for that. Ability to securely purchase products from the infotainment display. 10% said they want to be able to buy stuff on the internet using their car. I, I'm not going to use the, the Amazon app on my phone. I'm not going to use e-commerce. I'm not going to use Firefox or Brave or Chrome on my phone to navigate to a website and then log in using the password manager and then pay using the, sa the saved credentials. I am then go I'm, I'm going to enter the credentials for all these shopping apps into my car. And then I'm going to enter my credit card number on file. Again, instead of using all the stuff that may already be saved in my phone, I'm going to enter this into my car. Like I'm going to put my credit card number into my car. I'm going to put like a password manager in there so that you have my login to all the websites I shop at. Like, no, I'm not doing that. If I have a password manager with all my passwords saved for all these different shopping sites, that's on my phone. If I have my credit card info saved, again, this is all stuff that I can already do from the device that 99% of the population is carrying around in their pocket and already paying for. Why would I pay you again for what I already get in my effing phone? Now, again, luckily, most people are not interested in paying for this, and I hope that the car companies start to understand it. Now, when you scroll down, it shows you over here that when it comes to interest, the lowest interest comes from people who have gas cars, and then there's higher interest from people with plug-in hybrids or electric vehicles. They're saying that they, in this article, that they think that the reason people are more interested in these features with electric vehicles is because they are stuck charging for 20 or 40 minutes, whereas with a gas car, you just fill up and you're done. And usually you're not sitting in the car using the infotainment while you're pumping gas. You're usually just sitting there doing this, and then you're done pumping gas. So 
I honestly, I honestly don't even think that's the case. I think that people that are buying electric vehicles are buying newer technology. On average, people that are buying newer technology tend to be excited or slightly more interested in technological features and functionality, even if they suck. But if, if I was sitting in an electric vehicle and waiting for it to finish charging, I wanted to watch something. Blackberry, that's really obnoxious. Like, stop. If I were sitting... Blackberry! Blackberry, get down here! If I was sitting in my car and I wanted to watch something, I would use the $10 mount holding my phone up to the windshield, and I would turn on New Pipe or YouTube Vanced or whatever other service that it is that's uh, to watch whatever video that is that somebody linked me to. I'm not going to like scroll through my car for this. This is no purpose. If I have a Netflix subscription, I'll use the Netflix feature on my phone, the Netflix app on my phone, rather than viewing it from my car. It's just, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care to pay extra money for what it is I already have. The sad part of this is when it was broken down by age, it unfortunately appears to be my generation that is the, the, the cause of this, the driving factor. So when you look at people 60 to 69 years old, they have virtually no interest in this. They are, they are the green bar. 50 to 59, slightly more interest. 40 to 49, more interest. 30 to 39, the most interest. And then here's the interesting part. Under 30 years old actually has less interest. So people under 30 years old are less interested in these features than people from 30 to 39. So it unfortunately seems to be my generation that's driving this whole everything as a subscription uh, garbage, which is... Mm, you know, not, not a point of pride for me at, at this point in time. Now, one of the things that I appreciated is some of the comments on this on TechDirt is from people saying, make anything subscription-based, I'm not going to buy it. Then I will cut into the wiring harness and bypass your off switch with one of my own, which, again, is, in my opinion, comment of the day. That's pretty much what I would do if somebody said that my car's heated seats are only going to work if I give them a certain amount of money a month. I am going to cut into the car on Blackberry. Cut the shit, girl. If you want attention, you come down here. You come down here if you want attention. You don't stand outside of other people's rooms and scream all night. That's not very nice. She's sitting in front of other people's rooms and just scre like squealing at the top of her lungs. It's just so stubborn. Next comment. This points out the safety risk of subscriptions too. You add in stuff like this and people are going to either yank it out or modify the software to enable features. Some might be competent to do it correctly, but all the arguing for authorized service equals safety falls kind of flat when you're actively pushing things that encourage unauthorized service. And very true. If you're going to make it so that when I buy my car, I'm buying my car, I'm buying heated seats, I'm buying all this functionality, but it doesn't work until I pay you, well, you're encouraging me to now open my car up and fuck with it to get what it is I already paid for, which means more people are going to be screwing with their car. And one of the primary arguments against right to repair is that people will hurt themselves and stop encouraging them to hack their shit to get what they already paid for. I am personally happy that the results of the survey demonstrate that a majority of people have no interest in paying more money per month for subscription features for their car. I'm very curious where you fall on this. Do you think that these are features that are actually worthwhile? Or do you think that just about everything listed here is stuff that you just don't want in your car? I have a feeling based on the comments that I read and based on the audience that I have cultivated here that on average the people in my audience are the types that probably believe the less computers in my car the better and um, at this point in time looking at the way things are going I honestly can't blame them let me know what you think in the comments down below that's it for today and as always I hope you learned something I'll see you in the next video bye now